Hey, crochet friends. Welcome to Sugar Joy. It's Cindy. And today I'm going to show you how I made this fabulous. Let's see. I think I'm calling it the Even Moss at Berry Ridge Throw Blanket. Fabulousness. For those of you who are experienced crocheters, I will describe exactly what I did. And as always, you can go to daisyfarmcrafts.com for the complete written pattern. And I will pin that in the comments section, a direct link. All right, so the materials I used for this was three skeins of the Red Heart Super Saver. It's an acrylic yarn, and this is the Erin color, and um, it's one of my very favorites. And I use, uh, on this particular blanket, I used the nine millimeter Susan Bates hook um, that has the pointy end, and um, I, it's just great for making those berry stitches. Um, but any nine millimeter hook will do you fine. So this blanket measures six feet by four feet. And for me, I chained out 130. Um, as long as it's an even number, you can do as many chains as you'd like. And then I started with one row of single crochet. And then I did the berry stitch row, another row of single crochet, and then we did the front post single crochet row followed by a another single crochet row and then another front post single crochet single crochet row and then I did 10 rows of the even moss stitch and then finished that with a row of single crochet alternated with our front post single crochet and then ending with the berry stitch and that's our repeat So I really like the way that it looked starting with the uh, berry stitch row. And so um, I purposefully started it there, but then it also gives it that nice centerpiece. And then um, at the end, I went ahead and did another row of berry stitch before I did the fringe, and it gives it this nice um, berry stitch border. So to get started, we need to make our chain. And for this sample, I'm going to chain 20. It's a nice, stretchy, bouncy chain. And want to do our uh, single crochet row insert your hook into the second chain from the hook pull through a loop yarn over and complete the stitch insert the hook pull through a loop single crochet All right, so we're at the last uh, single crochet of the row. And for this pattern, um, the challenge is keeping these rows straight, uh, mixing texture stitches. It's very easy to lose count. And it's also easy to get confused at the end of a row as to which space to work. And so there can be trouble with the ends, um, but I think I've come up with a solution and it works great. So the very last stitch of the row on all of our rows, we're gonna end with a slip stitch. 
and then we chain one and turn. And then we're gonna work into the very, into that slip stitch, we're going to work another slip stitch. So at the beginning and at the end of each row, we're gonna slip stitch. Now this is our berry stitch row. So our next stitch is going to be yarn over, pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, insert your hook, pull through, and you'll have one, two, three, four, five. And then you pull through all five. Now the first row, um, until you get more blanket underneath you, it's just better to work a little bit slower. And then with the berry stitch, we alternate with a single crochet. And then we do our berry stitch, yarn over, insert the hook, pull through a loop, pull through one, yarn over, insert, and then pull through. And then we go back to a single crochet. So um, if you're having trouble keeping your rows straight, uh, the first place you want to look when you go back to check if you don't come out right is to make sure that you got your um, single crochet between each of your berry stitches. I often found that I would miss the single crochet. You know, you just get watching a program or you get talking like I'm talking and then you're not paying attention to what you're doing and you forget to do your single crochet. So I actually, on my berry stitch rows, I really make a point to be very meditative about it and pay close attention to what I am doing because I don't like frogging. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always very sad when I get to the end of the row and I know I've done something wrong. So we'll see. We'll see if I make it to the end of the row here. Hooray! I counted correctly. And so I'm going to end this row with a slip stitch. And then I'm going to chain one, turn, and then I'm going to go back into that same space and do another slip stitch. And then this row is our single crochet row. And what I found with the um, doing the slip stitch at the beginning and the end of every row on this project is that it, it acts like a stitch marker because um, you know that at the end of the row you're looking for a tiny stitch to work. Whereas ending with a single crochet, sometimes those kind of get big and loopy. And you'll see as we come up onto the um, front post single crochet rows, they can be particularly problematic for keeping your um, ends straight, but they're so worth it because it's such a pretty stitch and it took me three blankets to figure out how to end it properly. So you might not suffer the pain of the uneven ends, okay? So we get to the last one and I can tell 
that it is my slip stitch that I need to work. And this is again where the Susan Bates comes in, really handy. And we do another slip stitch. And as you can see, you definitely don't want to work tight on the, on the slip stitches. And I just sort of like, as I go along, I just fiddle with these rows a little bit. And what, you know, when you're working on a nice long blanket, you know, it's not a big deal. So here we go. Here's our first, uh, you know, single crochet texture stitch, berry stitch grouping right there. So our next turn and we do our slip stitch. And then whenever you're, whenever the, um, the texture stitch is facing away from you, you know that it is time to do another texture stitch. When you're looking at a texture stitch, you're doing your single crochet rows, with the exception, of course, with the even moss, because you just work that on top of each other. But we're not there yet. All right, so now we are going to do our front post single crochet row. So we worked a, a slip stitch into the first space, and then we're gonna skip this post, and we're gonna work the second post. And it's just a regular single crochet. And so we go through. And work. Across the row. A front post single crochet. And so we're at the end of the front post single crochet row. We're going to work our last post here. And then we are gonna work a single crochet into this, just a regular single crochet. And then we work the last stitch as a slip stitch. Chain one, turn, slip stitch, and then we just do another row of single crochet to frame our front post single crochet row. Now at this point, I suggest counting. Now I know that 130, actually it'll be 129, or I actually think it was 139. Anyway, I counted to it a lot as I was trying to figure this out. And I did find that just being right on top of it from the very first, especially the very first uh, front post single crochet row, just go back and count and make sure that you're not off. So if your chain count was 130, you're gonna be counting to 129 because when you turn, you lose one stitch. Okay, so I counted correctly. We're doing good. Got 19. So I do my last slip stitch. Chain one, turn, slip stitch, and then we're going to do another row of front post single crochet. So we don't work the first post, we work the second post. And off we go. All right, so now it is time 
to begin the even moss stitch. So here we are on the back side where there is no texture. We've done our slip stitches and then we're going to do a half double crochet, which is yarn over, insert your hook, pull through a loop, and then pull through all three. And then we do a slip stitch. And then yarn over. And if we've counted correctly, we will end with a slip stitch. If we have not counted correctly, we won't end with a slip stitch and then we'll be very sad and we will have to undo everything that we did. And then we are just going to continue matching up your half double crochets and your slip stitches for your even moss for 10 rows. So here is a completed sample in another color, although I am gonna make that pink color. It's a Karen one pound rose and I really like it. This one, I can't remember what the name of this one is, but it's Karen one pound also. Anyway, all right, so this is the full repeat of the pattern. We start with our <clears throat> chain, single crochet, and uh, berry stitch combo here. And then the same with our front post single crochet combo. We have our section of the um, even moss. And then we do this. This is the end here because we want um, the other end of the project to finish off with the berry stitch so we have a berry stitch border. So now, and then you can see, well, let's just talk about the ends here. All right, so the ends are nice and straight, even on these pesky front post single crochet rows. On this one, I think on this row, the reason that it puckers out maybe just a little bit is I think on this side, I did a um, single crochet instead of the slip stitch on this one stitch. But you can see, even with doing that, I was able to recover very easily. So there you have it. Now let's do a little fun fringe. So we just insert our hook into the corner here and we're going to add two rows of just um, single crochet and then we will do one row of berry stitch. So So I kind of just chain, I use this as like the chain one and turn into, we're not going to work into any yarn. We're just going to work into those spaces, the turning chain spaces right there. Here we have our two rows of single crochet and one row of the berry stitch. And so now I will chain one and turn and just do a slip stitch in the first and then slip stitch into the second and then start making my fringe. And I chained out 10. For this project, I've done all different kinds of lengths. So however much you wanna do, and then you just slip stitch your way back down. And when I get down to the last chain, I work back into the same space that I started from a slip stitch and then I do a slip stitch into the next space 
and then I chain it out again. Now you can, if you want, um, you can skip it and you could, I, you know, originally thought, oh, well that might be kind of cute just to line them up with each of the dots, but I ended up liking a denser fringe, but I think either way it works. So that's it. I hope you enjoy making this blanket and thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to join Tip and I for sister chat over on the Daisy Farm Crafts channel. And also make sure to check the comments for the pinned link uh, to the downloadable PDF at daisyfarmcrafts.com. Have a good one.